Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a couple of days of upcoming severe weather that could be quite intense. We actually have an en enhanced risk for tomorrow, which is pretty high. Anyway, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Also, be sure to check out our pinned comment down below where I've added our Discord server as well. A very, very active community. It's very fun. I'm in there. I'm pretty active, so I would love to have you guys there. Again, click the link down below to see that. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how long do you think we have until our next tornado outbreak? Obviously, it's been a long time. Pretty much we didn't have any for May. Uh, with a lot, so the last time we had a major tornado outbreak was probably April. So let me know in the comments down below when you think that will be. Anyway, let's get into this video and we're taking a look at our categorical outlook here. And as you can see, uh, we do have a pretty large marginal risk there with the darker greens there for the central United States reaching from Canada all the way down to Mexico. Uh, we also have one down there for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. There is two areas of slight risk there, one for Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, and then one for Texas and Oklahoma. It's that Texas and Oklahoma one that I'm mostly eyeballing for the best chance for severe weather uh, throughout the day today. All right, now looking at the individual risks, here's our wind outlook. And as you can see, we have two areas of 5% within 25 miles of a given location, one there for the southeast coast, and again, one there for the central United States, with three different areas of 15% chance, one for Texas, one for Texas and Oklahoma, and then one there for Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota. It's that one there for Texas and Oklahoma I'm mostly worried about here. What we're going to do is we're about to move on, and we're going to take a look at our hail outlook, the tornado outlook, and then we're going to start getting into that simulated radar, and eventually we'll move on to tomorrow, where we're expecting much more major impacts. All right, so here we are taking a look at that hail outlook, and you can see it pretty much looks the same as the wind outlook, except those two yellow areas, again, 15% chance. The one on the bottom is a little larger there. Again, it's that area I'm mostly worried about for Texas and Oklahoma, and that's kind of the area that's going to expand through tomorrow to have the enhanced risk where we're going to see an enhanced risk there for Oklahoma and Kansas, but not to move on too fast because we're going to have to save that for just a couple minutes later. Uh, and then here's that tornado outlook for today and you can see we have a two percent chance for texas and oklahoma and you might be thinking a two percent chance that's practically nothing don't think of it that way it's two percent chance within 25 miles of a given location which probably means it's more likely than not that we might see one tornado within this green area which a tornado is a very significant weather event so i think that that is to be taken seriously if you do live in that green area there all right, now what we're going to do is we're about to move on to that simulated radar. We're going to take a look at the bulk shear, the cape, and then also just take a look at the radar itself. And then we're going to move on to tomorrow's severe weather, which again should be more major than today. All right, and here we are taking a look at that bulk shear for today. And mostly we're talking about tonight. I think that once we're reaching 8, 9 p.m., that's when things are going to start to get going for the most part here, especially for the Oklahoma-Texas border. Down in further south Texas, I think we could have some severe weather earlier on, but mostly this area I'm mostly concerned about. I think we're going to have to wait till a little bit later tonight, which obviously makes it a little bit more dangerous since people are going to be asleep. Hopefully we don't have any tornadoes though. Uh, you can see that we have in our bulk shear, we have some pinks, some purples, some reds showing up that's where we have more moderate areas of bulk shear and that's mostly where i'm taking a look at some chance for tornado activity let's go ahead and move on to that cape and you can see it's pretty high actually we have mostly reds there which is 3,000 to 4,000 but there is some scattered in purples which is 4,000 to 5,000 definitely sufficient for severe weather to say the least here so let's go ahead and look at that simulated radar and this is by already maybe 12 a.m so again very late is when we're going to get started with these and you can see for oklahoma we really start to see these get built in here uh now let's go ahead and take it to about uh this is maybe 4 or 5 a.m so we're still on day one technically according to the national weather service or the storm prediction center and you can see those mostly become multicellular where they're all attached there in central oklahoma probably near Oklahoma City there by this point uh, and they're probably not tornadic by that point either I wouldn't take it too lightly but I think once they become multicellular that chance for tornadoes has diminished that very small risk as it is but again just be alert because these storms could become tornadic especially when you have that high of cape that high of bulk shear, and when you live in Oklahoma I'm sure uh, you're always pretty much on the lookout for tornadoes if you live in Texas or Oklahoma uh, so just 
be aware. Just be weather aware. All right, we're going to move on to day two here, but we're going to take a look at that enhanced risk and the more major severe weather implications here. All right, and here's that day two categorical risk here. And as you can see, we have a much more confined area for severe weather. However, the chance is higher as we move to day two. Uh, we have a marginal risk again in that deeper green area. In the yellow area, we have a slight risk. So that's going to be for Oklahoma, a little bit of Arkansas, a little bit there of Missouri, and a bit of Iowa, uh, but mostly there for Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. And then our enhanced risk there is for northern Oklahoma, and then a lot of south central and southeastern Kansas there. Let's look at those individual outlooks here. Here's that wind outlook. And as you can see, we have a 30% chance they're in the red within 25 miles of a given location. So I think that's going to be our most major implication here uh, as we move forward. As we look at that simulated radar later on, you'll definitely be able to tell, and I'll explain why I think wind is going to be the biggest implication here. Here's that hail outlook, and you can see it's one step uh, slighter, I guess, or lesser. Here we have a 5% in the green and then a 15% in the yellow. And you can see we do not have a 30% chance in the red, uh, or we don't have a red yet, uh, but there might be later on. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, we will have to maybe update that if that is the case. And then here's that day two tornado outlook. And you can see we do have a little bit of a higher chance. We have a bigger area of 2% in the green area that expands through Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and maybe even a little bit of South Dakota as well. Uh, and again, when you have an area that large with 2% within 25 miles of a given location, the odds are greater uh, that we will have a tornado or two when you see that large of an area of 2% within 25 miles of a given location. Um, so, and we also have a brown area here for basically where our enhanced risk is, and that's a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location. So it wouldn't be surprising if we have multiple tornadoes within this brown area. So take it very, very seriously here. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to that simulated radar just like we did for day one, and then we'll get into our comment of the day. All right, and here's our cape, and we have a shocking amount of cape here, actually. Probably the highest amount of shear I've seen all year. Uh, not that that actually means we will see, you know, more severe weather than when you have less cape. It just means that these thunderstorms are going to have a very easy time developing. It makes me think that we probably will get into that 30% chance for hail if this does verify. Usually high cape type events means high, high hail events, in my opinion. That's usually what I've looked at in the past. Uh, in our red areas, that's where we have 3,000 to 4,000. By the way, if you have 1,000 plus, that's sufficient for severe weather. So we have three times the amount that you need within the red area already. In the purples to the pink shades, that's where we have 4,000 to 5,000. I guess in those pink kind of, I would call it like a coral color. That's where we have 5,000 to 6,000. And then you can see there's even a little bit of a brown shade there. Uh, in Oklahoma, it's very small, but you can kind of see where it gets a lot darker. That's where we have 6,000 plus cape, guys. So that's probably the highest cape I've seen all year, like I said before. Very, very sufficient. That's six times the amount you need for severe weather. So I think this could be a pretty more, I, I would say this would probably be a more significant hail event than what the Storm Prediction Center is saying, if I had to say anything different than what they're saying. Let's go ahead and move on to the bulk shear. And again, nothing too impressive here, and that's why we only have a 5% chance of tornadoes. But again, take it very seriously. This could be a very dangerous tornado event if we do even see one tornado. One tornado that is an EF0 could kill people. So you really need to take it seriously either way, whether you're looking at a major tornado outbreak or just a, a slight chance for tornadoes. Either could kill people. So you really need to just be careful, be aware, and just make sure you take cover if you need to. Uh, so in these pink shades, that's where we have a uh, pretty slight to moderate amounts of shear, but that's the highest we're going to have, and that's going to work its way from the west to the east. Let's go ahead and take a look at the simulated radar, and this one's going to be maybe by about 6 p.m., so you might be eating dinner, and we're going to start to see these storms flare up here for Kansas and Oklahoma. You can see they're not in our enhanced area yet, so they're not tapping into that very high cape yet. So let's go ahead and move it towards maybe, I would say, 9 or 10 p.m. And you can see now by this point they're in our enhanced area. So I think they're probably going to be uh, definitely flaring up a little more as they move into the northern Oklahoma, southern, south central Kansas area. And then by time we're reaching maybe 
I would say approximately 12 a.m. here. Uh, we're going to be working our way into Monday by this point. You can see that we definitely are starting to see these storms flare up more and more. Now, these storms do have a bow, I guess, characteristic to them where they're kind of bowing out. And that usually leads me to believe that we will see pretty widespread wind damage from these. So that's going to be my initial guess with this one. And then as we work our way towards maybe 4 or 5 a.m., you can see there's definitely a bow signature there that you can make out clearly there for areas in central eastern Oklahoma. So I would say wind damage is going to be definitely the biggest implication with this one. And as you look at our significant tornado parameter, we will have some pretty high amounts around 2 to 4 on our significant tornado parameter. Uh, so tornadoes will definitely be possible with these storms, but it's not going to be the biggest implication. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you guys prefer sunsets or sunrises? And Austin7 said, sunsets, I sleep too much for sunrises, and I couldn't agree anymore. I can't remember the last time I saw a sunrise because I just don't feel like waking up for the sunrise. Anyway, guys, on that note, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. And again, be sure to check out the pinned comment. Please join our Discord server. I can't wait to see you there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.